Well, another year, another WWE 2K video game coming out. Um, and the cover star this year is Cody Rhodes. And obviously for the, the deluxe edition, the cover stars are Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley. Um, you know, the truth behind Cody being the cover star, I mean, it's quite simple, right? This guy is most definitely going to be winning the world title, right? Winning the undisputed title against Roman. I mean, if you looked at the trailer, the trailer just telegraphed what match that we are getting for night two of WrestleMania. And... For those that think The Rock and Roman is going to be the the WrestleMania Night 2 main event, um, well, the 2K trailer will definitely tell you otherwise because those are strong seeds being planted. Now, if you think of of the theme of 2K24, it's about finishing your story. You know, we're going on 40 years of WrestleMania. And this video game, you know, it's really about 40 years of WrestleMania. Well, celebrating 40 years of WrestleMania. The theme is finishing the story. And in that trailer, you saw Roman spearing Cody and Cody, you know, showing disappointment. Right? And it showed a hero, right, the good guy, expressing disappointment, expressing uh, hopelessness, you know, failure. And I talked about it in my last, you know, wrestling talk about how Cody should get to Roman Reigns. And it shouldn't be done by him winning the Royal Rumble, not by the traditional way. It needs to be done in a way that that shows Cody Rhodes as an underdog. In a way that he has to fight like hell to get back to Roman. And it has to be like how Shawn Michaels earned his match with The Undertaker because there was an obsession, right? And there has to be that that character shift with Cody. There has to be that obsession. It can't just be the drive, motivation, determination. It can't just be all the good guy uh, is going to beat the, the big, bad Roman Reigns. It can't be just so elementary. It has to be where Cody is obsessive over finishing his story because that's that makes for great television you know right now cody is almost coasting now he showed a lot of fire he showed a lot of drive and a lot of you know intensity in that promo exchange with cm punk now, in that promo, Cody already showed me, like he already proved, like in that promo alone, he is the top guy. Like he is the guy, like the guy to carry your company. He's, he, he's the guy because I almost feel like that the promo between Punk and Cody was a test for Cody Rhodes, another test to see if he could hang with one of the great Mike, you know, one of the great Mike, you know, one of the greatest talkers, right? I wanted to say Mike Worker, but great talkers in the wrestling business in CM Punk, right? CM Punk is a master on the mic. 
And one of Cody's biggest tests came in the form of him battling Punk on the mic. And Cody held his held his own. He had Punk stressed out. He had this man taken off his coat. Dude was speaking facts. Right? And his music was playing in the end. So it kind of it kind of indicated that Cody got the better of Punk in that verbal exchange. Uh, some people will say Punk got the better of Cody. I can see why you would say that. Because CM Punk is such a great talker. It's like anything he says, I mean, he can tell any he can tell any story. He can tell any story, make it sound believable, uh, believable and make it sound great. You know, Punk is just a naturally good talker. So it's it, it would be hard to, like, get the better of him. That's one of the reasons why Punk was on top, why he was champion for over 400 days. It's not because of his wrestling ability. It's because he knows how to work his mouthpiece. He knows how to talk. He knows how to get the people's attention. And command their attention. When Punk was on top, there was no one on his level in terms of cutting promos. The only one that could really match him was John Cena. That's why him and John Cena were what were always the ones battling for the for the you know the the WWE title, right? Punk had no real competition during his run when it came to the mic. He had no competition, to be honest. Well, now he has competition in Cody because Cody proved, he proved ever since he came back uh, in 2022, he has proven to be one of the best talkers in the business. He knows he's a great storyteller. And to see those two clash on the mic, it almost made me want to see them for WrestleMania. But I know that, that the end goal for Cody is for him to be the one that ends Roman's, you know, long title reign. To, to finally be the one to beat Roman Reigns. And finish his story, win the title that his father never won. He can't beat anybody else. He has to beat Roman. Roman Reigns cannot lose at the Rumble. No, Roman has to win clean, dominant. If he's going to face The Rock or Cody, I'm leaning toward more, you know, more Cody than, than The Rock. Because you got to look at it from a long-term perspective. Who is going to be there every week? When that match is said and done, who is going to be there every week? Cody. Roman's no longer at full time. The biggest, like, yes, the biggest story is The Rock and Roman. I would say the biggest dream match uh, the biggest box office match you can do is The Rock and Roman. And here's the thing. In terms of who has the strongest story behind it, I feel like there is a stronger story to be told with, with Cody Rhodes and Roman. Because, let's be honest, The Rock and Roman have not interacted as much at all. They've only had one interaction, and that was at the Rumble 2015. And th this was a time when Roman was not even at his best. Um, you know, there's already a, a pre-existing arc, right? A scenario when it comes to, you know, the, the Samoan heritage and who is truly the head of the table. You can tell that story, no doubt, and it would sell, right? Um, but that's pretty much it. 
Because the, a reason to do The Rock and Roman Reigns, the hat, there has to be a legit story behind it. Does The Rock truly want to be the head of the table? Does he really want to be head of the table? Does he really want to be the one to beat Roman Reigns? Because he knows that beating Roman Reigns, right? Any guy that beats Roman Reigns, they are carrying the torch. This is their torch to carry no one else. They are the guy. They're, they're going to be the one to carry the load, carrying the company. But can The Rock do that at 52? Can he put on a great performance, a WrestleMania-worthy performance at 52 years old? Let's be realistic here. I know a lot of y'all want that match. Trust me, I do too. But I'm more invested in seeing Cody finish his story because there is more long term, you know, ramifications when it comes to Cody Rhodes and Roman. The end goal, the, the, the long term story here is Cody now is the guy. The Rock wins, beats Roman for the title. What does that do for the company as a whole if The Rock is not going to be there to defend the belt every pay-per-view? But not just that. Will his body be able to hold up? Because, listen, when you're the world champion, right, you are not just a guy carrying the company like the main champion. You're, you you, you got to have a A-plus work rate. Like Seth Rollins at the moment, he is the perfect example of a work rate wrestler who is a world champion. Hence why his body's breaking down. You look at Benoit and Eddie Guerrero from 2004. They were the work rate wrestlers that were the, the, the world champions from Raw and SmackDown. Eddie could not hold on. Well, he couldn't really, you know, rest in peace to Eddie Guerrero. And I don't mean this by any disrespect. The guy's a legend and guy's a, you know, one of the goats. But the reason why they had to take the belt off of Eddie was because he wasn't able to carry the load. His body wasn't able to sustain, you know, the work rate that comes with being the champion. And back then, it was it was more important to be that work rate wrestler, to be on every show, attend every live event. And unfortunately for Eddie, he could not keep up. And I really believe Eddie was supposed to have a long title reign. And, you know, that's why they had to hand it over to JBL. JBO pretty much took his spot. I don't, I don't want to say take his spot, but um, but JBO was the guy to hold on to that belt, to carry the load, to kind of do what Eddie could not do. And which is no fault of his own. It just, his body just wasn't able to hold up. Maybe mentally for him, he wanted to keep up the momentum and really hold on to that belt and be a top face, but his body just couldn't hold up, you know? So for Cody, the guy that beats Roman Reigns should be Cody because the guy that beats Roman, they are the, they are the face. They are the top face no one is on their level. Like once Cody beats Roman, there is no one that is on his equal, like on his level in terms of status, right? Of star power. Like there is no one on his level because no one did what Cody was able to do. 
Cody did something that everybody else failed to do before him for three and a half years, for over a thousand days. The first man to pin the tribal chief, to beat him for his title. But now Cody wins that belt. You're going to be seeing him on every pay-per-view, every PLE. He's going to attend every live event. He's going to be a, the biggest spokesperson for the company. He's, he's going to fill in John Cena's shoes very well. If you don't think he's gonna if you don't think that Cody can fill in John Cena's shoes, right? To be that spokesperson, to be that 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 company guy, because he's perfect for it, you know, all American, great talker, charismatic, you know. And a great in-ring worker, great storyteller. You know, I feel like Cody Rhodes can be, you know, a, a, a huge John Cena upgrade. A huge John Cena upgrade. Being the top face. And he's going to have great opponents. That's why it's important to build up your roster of heels for Cody when Cody eventually beats Roman because it's very important for after WrestleMania.